my friends and welcome to another video from iSeries, uh, quick thoughts on a very belated video in which I always talk about different stories from the rich Star Trek universe. This video will be about the next episode of Star Trek The Next Generation called The Offspring and these are my honest opinions about it. Well, this is a difficult episode to talk about for me. I don't like a specific type of stories, not just in Star Trek, but overall. A type of stories which do, as I call it for a lack of a better term, emotional manipulation. I don't like works of art which have a goal to make you feel a specific emotion. You might argue that, technically speaking, most stories have the goal of making you feel a certain way, and you wouldn't be completely wrong. What I mean is to say that uh, there is a difference between a story which has the goal to, let's say, uh, say an interesting story, or be a character study, and while doing it, it is also, for example, funny, or dramatic, or sad, or whatever, and a story which is created specifically to make you feel something. Look at, for example, the late night shows, some of them are funny, and some of them need to inform the audience when they should laugh or clap or anything else. Hopefully it makes a little bit of sense. This episode is one of those stories. Do I like it? No. Do I hate it? No. Will I be trying to persuade you that you shouldn't like this episode? Of course not. Will I insult you if you love this episode? No, of course not. I mean, this was one of my mother's favorite episodes of all Star Trek shows she managed to watch. I always say that all of these are just my opinions, but still some people take any criticism as a personal attack. But let's talk a bit about the story. Data builds a daughter. He builds an android, which he considers to be his daughter, and with this information you know absolutely everything you need to know about this episode. And that's a giant problem, at least for me. I mean, this series was episodic, at least in this point in time, which means that in the end of the episode his daughter will die, and because of the episodic nature she will unfortunately not be seen or mentioned ever again. Her existence doesn't influence Data in the long run, making this whole story absolutely pointless. Which is another big problem for me. I don't like pointless episodes. If they're good, I can tolerate them, but in this case the pointlessness of it is just one of the huge list of problems. See, in the next episode something will be happening to Worf, something bad, and it will influence him for the rest of the series. And not just him, it will influence the whole Klingon Empire. I was secretly hoping that they will at least mention it as daughter in Picard, but nope, they just created another one without even mentioning her. So we know she will die in the end, but because this whole episode can be a downer, she will have some funny encounters with the crew, and we will have a montage of her trying to fit in with mankind. The show needs also a problem for them to overcome, so a situation in which Data and his daughter should be separated will be created. So yes, that's basically the story in a nutshell. Just by knowing the gimmick of this story, we know the whole basis of the plot. Anyway, Anyway, we start the episode with Data calling Jordy, Wesley and Deanna to his quarters. First scene, first problem. Data calling Jordy and Wesley to his quarters makes perfect sense. It has been established that they are friends, they often work together on technical problems. But why did he call Deanna? Because uh, they had to give her character something to do. Then they start to talk about the plot and we see immediately the second problem. Their whole chat is basically a huge exposition dump, which is usually considered to be a violation of the main principle of visual storytelling, show, don't tell. When you actually start to listen to the dialogue, there is immediately a third huge problem. They talk about how weirdly Data behaves since he came back from a conference. He's constantly locking himself up uh, in his lab, avoiding any social contact. Oh yes, that's weird. Hey, do you remember when uh, was the last time Data behaved weirdly? I am talking about a specific incident from season 1. He was actually replaced by his evil twin, Lore, and it was actually Wesley who uncovered it. Which uh, is a problem, because why is he now suddenly so calm when Data behaves strangely again? 
anyway, I'm not going to break down every single scene. Uh, this should be a 10 to 15 minutes long video, not a two hour long feature. Data has been, of course, secretly working on his hobby, building another android, who he sees as his child. Okay, why does Data suddenly feel the need to reproduce? Can he feel the need to reproduce? He shouldn't have feelings at this point of time, so what is the motivation for him to do this? If this was the first time we have seen Data, I would be um, quite, but this feels weird. This is the same problem I had with the Vulcans. How can you purely logically, without any emotional involvement, decide you want children? But Captain Picard has a problem with it and says that Data should definitely ask him before he did this. Data gives a perfectly logical question. Why does Picard care about his offspring and not about the private sex lives of any of his other crew members? He does have a point. Picard tries to give one of his speeches, but sorry, I'm on Data's side. You might say that the Federation tries to protect itself after Lore turned out to be a psycho killer, and again, I understand that fear, but still, it feels morally wrong. In the previous season, the decision has been made that Data is basically a person, but in this episode they don't treat him as a colleague, but as a property. The one interesting concept in this episode which I really like is that Data has decided that his child uh, should decide what gender, race and or looks will it have, but don't forget one very important thing, they are robots. Doing this to a human child is anything but progressive. I'm talking of course about the hey let's raise our child without harmful gender stereotypes crowd. It is fascinating to see on robots but only on robots. After a small examination, Lal, the child, decides that it wants to look like a 20-year-old earth woman and dress up like a 60-year-old earth woman. So the proud daddy allows her to change her appearance and we get the montage covering her progress. And it is so embarrassing to watch. I don't like when adults pretend that they're children or when quote-unquote normal people pretend that they're mentally ill or when the so-called able-bodied people pretend that they miss a leg or an arm. I don't know what a correct term for my feeling is, but let's say I internally pray for it to end as soon as possible. All I see is a light which says love and clap. Wesley recommends uh, to Data that Lal should start going to school and Data thinks it's a great idea because who can have better parenting advices than a childless teenager. So they put her to school but it ends exactly as you think it ends. The kids laugh at her and you should be sad. Then they have a talk about human prejudice, another scene which should make you sad, but there is also one genuinely funny scene. Data doesn't want her to go to school anymore, so she starts serving drinks on Ten Forward under Guinan's supervision. She's technically a toddler, so of course the best thing she can do is to work in a bar. Well, at least it's not one of the topless bars. Val sees a man and a woman holding hands and asks Gainen what are they doing, so Gainen starts to explain her the concept of love. In the script, she was uh, supposed to tell her that it's a feeling between a man and a woman. Whoopi, however, demanded to change the script and wanted it to be a feeling between a man and a woman, or or a man and a man, or a woman and a woman, and I'm sorry they were not allowed to shoot it her way. Many different people involved in the production have claimed that one of the producers, usually thought to be Rick Berman, was completely terrified of just acknowledging that gay people exist, which is really a pity they didn't do it. Uh, if they shot something like this uh, in 1990, it could have a big impact, not like now when they have gay people everywhere on the new show. In 2020 it means nothing, in 1990 it would send an important message. But at least they changed it to a feeling between two people, a nice compromise. So the funny part happens when Riker finally appears in the episode, he starts to talk to Lal and she grabs him and kisses him. These days it would be considered a sexual assault and Lal would be cancelled on space twitter, but back in 1990 it was still allowed to be considered
considered funny. Poor Riker doesn't understand what's going on when suddenly Data asks him what are his plans with his daughter, and everything in this scene is great. The acting, the writing, the delivery, the timing, wonderful scene. But then the script remembers that this is a sad story, so we meet the antagonist. And our antagonist is Admiral Villan McEvil. His real name is absolutely not important. His only goal is to take Lal away from her father, even though she's not ready. And Data is not ready. He treats her again like a property. Lal has something of an emotional breakdown, because she now has emotions. She goes to complain to Diana and then returns to the lab. To the lab where she dies because... I don't know. The same reason why Padme Amidala died in episode 3. The script simply needed her to die, so she dies. Admiral Villan tries to help to save her, but with no success. They think they explained what happened, but it's just pointless techno babble, and the music tells me that I should be sad. But no, I can't be sad. I need a death scene. So, of course, Lal has a death scene, in which she tells her father all of the cliche lines you hear in every soap opera in which a character dies because the actor got sick of it or demanded more money. And the story ends, and it uploaded her brain to his or something, I don't know and I don't care, and we will not talk about it ever again. The ending is desperately trying to make me sad, but fails miserably. And I'm not sure why, I mean, I cried when I've seen the ending of The Wrath of Khan for the first time, and even now that I've seen the movie, I don't know, maybe 15 times or more, I still get sad. I cried when the real Leonard Nemo died, or last year when we lost DC Fontana, but I just can't get emotionally affected in episodes like this. I don't care that Data's daughter is dead, just like I didn't care that, for example, Picard died in the last episode of Picard, even though he was my favorite captain for decades. I just can't get emotionally attached to something what is forcing me to feel a certain way. That's why I don't like stand-up comedy, for example, uh, because when a person desperately tries to make me laugh, the only thing I can feel is that I feel embarrassed for him. And with no emotional involvement for this episode or the character, I feel like I just wasted 45 minutes of my life. There are a few things I liked about this episode, but there are much more things I didn't like about this episode. If I should describe what I think about this episode, it would be, I just don't care. I don't like it, I don't hate it, but I'm afraid to go too harsh on this one, because I know that many people love it. You know what? If you love it, I'm happy for you, but I can't. On my standard scale from 0 to 10, where 0 is complete garbage, 10 is a masterpiece and 5 is just average, I will give this episode 4 out of 10. Thank you very much for watching and see you very soon. I am preparing a series of pretty complex comparison videos which will be ready in, well, a day or two. So thanks a lot and bye.